Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about unsourced reports of a grand delay strategy uh, by Donald Trump and Team Trump to, and this is the way it's portrayed, pit one federal judge against the other. In some ways, that's an overdramatic characterization in the sense that Judge Tanya Chutkin, there are two federal trials. One is presided over the election interference case in D.C. by Judge Tanya Chutkin. One is presided over by Judge Aileen Cannon in, Mar -a -La, in the Mar-a-Lago case down in Florida. And um, the, the idea in, in this uh, latest uh, kind of, you know, behind the scenes report is that Trump has this um, grand scheme to pit one, each against the other. Uh, now, the truth is there's something to it. You know, there are so many moving parts here. Things could work or not. But the basic idea, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, like other, uh, other commentators, I, I so often find myself relying on sports metaphors. But uh, I actually talked about this on CNN this morning, and they talked about Lucy and the football. And I realized the much better um, metaphor is the moving pick in basketball. So in basketball, you can set a pick for someone and they can go around you, you know, around your shoulder and get the pass, et cetera. What you can't do is keep moving on it uh, to continually impede the defender. You set your, your place, your guy goes around, but you can't move from there. But, it, but the idea behind Trump's uh, um, notion is that Judge Cannon sets the pick and keeps moving it. And the, I, and so she's going to have a hearing this week, a scheduling hearing on Friday. And she has done everything but actually move the scheduled May 20th trial date. But she's granted these extensions already and different kinds of motions. And it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, but either for whatever reason, though one reason could be to avoid making any holding of the sort that could then be challenged and uh, her um, continued presence on the case be, you know, possibly subject to a recusal motion. She, she's done the delays, but hasn't pulled the trigger yet on the, on the new trial date, but she has to. So the idea here in the reports is let's say she moves it, which seems sort of plausible to around July. Now, let's say the Supreme Court takes the immunity case. If that, I've said this before, but basically if they just grant, uh, deny the stay and you just go back to where you were when the, um, when, when Trump, uh, did his immediate interlocutory appeal, which he has a right to do because it's immunity, you're probably looking at a trial in latish May. If on the other hand, the Supreme Court takes it and decides it, in an expedited fashion as it would, you're probably looking at a trial around mid-July. So the idea is maybe the court takes it. Uh, maybe they decide it. Everyone assumes, and if Trump's lawyers have any kind of brain activity, they, they will understand as well. He's going to lose that motion. So it would then go back to check in around mid-July. Ah, but let's say Cannon has already staked out mid-July as part of her trial date in Mar-a-Lago. Wouldn't that be sweet uh, for Trump? Because that would mean the Chutkin trial, which is what they really fear, and they ought to really fear it. It's it's the one that, you know, it doesn't have Cannon for starters, and it really goes to what was so dastardly and anti-constitutional about his, you know, what he did at the at the end of his tenure. That's the one they fear. If Cannon now is sitting there saying, I'm going to go then, then it pushes Chutkin to a fair bit later, maybe too late. And of course, then the, the uh, final act in the plan would be Cannon, as she's almost certain to do, wouldn't hold a July date. She'd push it back more. She's got, they've got this classified information skirmishes to go. They, you know, none of them should really matter, but he's just filed seven motions, including you know, real featherweight stuff uh, or things that have already been decided like immunity. But, you know, the in this strategy, he counts on Cannon to, to uh, take a while. So uh, stake out July and blocking off, picking um, Chutkin and then moving to uh, and so that there's really nowhere for her to go. Um, and the, um, the, the, mo the trial he most fears and should most fear doesn't happen in 2024. 
certain things have to break right. And of course, Chutkin has to acquiesce in some ways. And, you know, she can be in communication with Canon. So it, it's by no means a, a foolproof grand scheme, but it does, it, it, it's a scheme and it really, you know, shows the um, real focus here as if we needed any reminder of it, of, of delay um, on, on Trump's team and a kind of uh, sneaky or, you know, several step way to try to uh, get out of trouble all the way through 2024 with the two federal trials. That's the notion behind this pitting one judge against the other idea that you may be reading about this morning. Not exactly uh, as it's portrayed, but, you know, there's something there where uh, a combination of strategy and some breaks on timing could uh, make that all happen to the great detriment of the country, which stands by with bated breath, uh, you know, wanting to have some judgment about whether the putative Republican nominee for president is a felon. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.